بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد chapter after it Yeah. 
this chapter is mainly used for a meaning which is called The object complied with the effect.
And you see, for example, in Kesava. In Kesara Zujaju. In Kasar al Zujaju means the glass broke. The glass broke. You don't want to say who broke the glass here. Okay? You do not want to say who broke the glass. You want to say that the glass. What happened to it? It accepted the effect of a breaking. So it broke. You understood? This is called, this meaning, just compliance, is called what? Al-Mubawa'a. Al-Mubawa'a. If you say, Tawa'ani, Yani'i, he submitted himself to, to my obedience. Okay? This is linguistically. But technically here it was called Mubawa because the object complied with the effect of the action. So it is it, it is as if it surrendered to that action. It surrendered to that action. So it accepted the, the effect of that action. Now, let's take the question here first. Now, yeah, you had a question. It was just to... It was answered, huh? Yeah. My question was just, this form, in Kesara Zujadja? Yeah, in Kesara Is this, like, this, this form, is it just the understanding, or how would you say that verbally? Would you say this verbally? Yeah, yeah, this verbally. This, huh? This verbally, these very words. But I mean, like say, say what that says. Can you translate? In Kesar. No, I know. Can you translate? It? The glass broke. Okay, that's what I want to understand. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know if it was just that when you see that form, that is understanding that something happened. It was complying to something. Yes, it is. Yeah, I know. I know. I agree. Okay. But I just, I just wanted to know, like, if I wanted to verbalize, tell someone, and I saw this, I said, this means the glass broke. Yes. Broke. That yes. Okay. Just for clarity. No problem. Uh, well, then. Uh, there is no focus on the door in this. Yeah? There's no there's focus no? on the door. No, here you don't mention the door. Is this like this image? The door here is a sujaj. Because I told you it's a the previous class, what did I tell you? Come, come. Let me go. 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 As long as the noun which comes after the verb to katamma, it's the door. As long as the noun which came after the verb to katamma, it is the door. Okay? Because here in Arabic, how would you put it? You would say, what broke? What's the answer? The glass. So to us, the glass is the door. Dramatically. In meaning, yes, no doubt, there's someone that broke the glass. But this is a sentence that does not have to do with that. Directly. This is a new sentence, a sentence of its own. In Kasar al the glass broke. Here, you referred breaking the glass, not to the one who broke it in the first place. This is a, a new sentence. Yeah. Is there a narrative? Huh? A narrative, like there is some 
No, now it comes in with the passive voice. This is not passive voice. Okay. Another example. Hmm? Yes. 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 Another example. What did I do here? So how do you say it? فتح أو فتحت فتحت الباب فتحت طيب فتحت طيب صح What happened to the door? The door got open. So how do I say got open? الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد فانفلق فكان كل فرق كالطود العظيم When Musa struck the sea with his stick الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد فانفلق انفلق is from the Based on the three-letter verb, what? Falak. <laughs> Split. Okay. So, in falak al bahru The sea? God? Split. Wale. In falak. In ghal. Same thing, same, same thing added. In 
الفتحتي الفتح دما الفتح 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 دنا الفتح بارليس الفتح هيتش الفتح 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 Everything coming is so easy. We don't have any problem. Well, if you add a, uh, a demand here, one of the demand here to this, doesn't it give it a door? A door of the yeah, thing? It has a door. Doesn't change the, the... We said this is just for the sake of congregation. Just for the sake of congregation. Okay, but would you find that? Would, would you find something to depends on the scale? It depends on the room. Maybe for example, the great Maliki Imam Khalil said, يقول الفقير المنقر إلى رحمة ربه المنكسر خاطره المنكسر He is munkasir. He is broken. In the sense of what? It's broken hearted, for example. Okay? So if you say, inkasartu, or inkasara, qalbi, it's a metaphorical meaning, my heart got broken. You know? Otherwise, we were just doing that for the sake of congregation. I understand. Yes.
second chapter.
So that is why you find in Islam great scholars who can write books in 30 volumes. They are able to. But they wrote books in 10 pages for you. Why? Very concise. They give you the main uh, titles and outlines for this knowledge so that you hold on to its firm foundations and slowly, slowly you become, uh, you master this science that you learn. Slowly, slowly. <coughs> Otherwise, if you were given knowledge at once, something like that. And this, this is said about any other science. In your studies, you don't study for one year. Huh? Your study goes on. Even when you, uh, yeah, when you specialize, mm -hmm. at least four years to get what? To get a badge. Depending on some countries, three, you can take it three, some countries, four. And it all see? And it's because knowledge is taking hour after hour after hour. It has to be breaks, you have to give a mind a break for you to go at it again and think about it again. What about a of you? So let us add one ashiara in Tukdalakum Tisoku. Okay. <coughs> this chapter, this is the second chapter. What concerns you is the main purpose it is used. Because the rest of the meanings that these chapters could come from are rare. And is it wise for a student of knowledge who's a beginner to occupy himself thinking about what's rare, it's not wise. What do you want with what is rare, if you're not going to use it? Huh? This is that? Isn't that so? But curiosity kills, as they say. <laughs> but you have to level, you have to adjust this curiosity, because the shaitan, I told you, remember what I told you yesterday? Shaitan is going to try the way of shahwa. If you will not succeed, the way of shubha. So he's going to make the road to knowledge for you a road of shahwa. Just the matter of filling and fulfilling your, your desire. A desire to know I want to know, I just want to know, give it to me. Well, tell me what to do in this case, tell me what to do in that case. Okay? But don't take it as a desire that you're fulfilling. Because there will not be a difference between you and between probably a person who has another religion. Also, he has a desire to speak Arabic. He has a desire to know much information. No, but you are, you have to be wise. You have to focus on what, and what you need now to pick up what is ahead. Because if you fill yourself with things that you just desire to know, at the, at the end you'll be just a person who's just a bag of information, and a loose bag of information. Just like, you know, they used to give the example of the old Range Rover with it basket with eggs, an open basket with eggs, because it falls apart all the time. If you run with a basket of eggs, what will, what will happen? Huh? What will happen? The eggs will fall and break. Okay? Now, what I said between the lines, did, it, did you get to what's between the lines? <laughs> By Don't tell Robert that I said this. But this is the old one. Al Mutawa. This is also useful Al Mutawa. If Ta'ala. If Ta'ala. If Ta'ala is also useful Al Mutawa.
say, how do you say? For example, <coughs> Jenna. Jama'atu al-Hababa. Jama'atu. What does it mean, Jama'atu? Jama'atu. I gather. I gather. Al-Habab. Wood. Wood. The wooden logs. Okay. Jama'atu al-Hababa. Jama'atu al-Hababa. Now. For jama'a, we don't say in jama'a. To show compliance, we don't say in jama'a. Some verbs you can say with infa'ala. Some verbs you can say with what? So what do we say? We say, Tama. Ij. تمام عن ها Gather itself. Gather by you. 
but you want to show that halal, you've done, you've done it, and, and, and the, the thing that you've gathered, accept that action of yours, so it got gathered. So can I say wood was gathered? Yes. That's correct. Uh, the wood was gathered. Yes. Grooming, 
it is given a dhamma, that is what uh, signifies the now. Yeah. 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 Where? Here? Here? Yeah. That's the tag, yeah. That's that's the way of writing it. Yeah. That's the tag, yeah. Huh? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, what does the tag say? Yeah. Uh, this is the tag. Yeah, if the The fa is the chief, the ta is the ta, the ain is the mean, the la is the ain. Yes, where did we reach? Huh?
لسببنا وتخويفه لمنع جميع الكافرين حقا شرعا. That's 
why in Imam al-Nawawi said that one should preserve his tongue from every word. General person. Yani, don't speak. You should not speak. Okay? Don't speak. And one might say, but how do I find my way in life? And you have to say, you have to speak. He says, yes, this is the exception. <laughs> this is an exception. So if you need to speak, speak. Otherwise, originally, don't speak. Being silent is better than speaking. Unless, ah, so there's the exception. Where is it? does the exception come? Unless there was a benefit in your speaking. So, basically, see, if you treat yourself in this manner, you will eventually not say except that which is beneficial to you. Okay? But if you flip it around and, you know, treat the principle, yani, you know, if you say yani, to yourself that speaking, I should be speaking, I can't just be boring, I should just say something. No, this is not our, not the Muslim's way. Okay? Because you might, might find it fun to speak and just say whatever is on your mind. But this thing that's on your mind, if you let it loose, it will make you fall into something that is, in the least, it is makruh. It is what? Disliked or high. And how much we see this in the gatherings, especially in the shabab, the youth, huh? especially the teenagers. They start speaking about awful stuff, their games, their activities, their etc. And then, behold, the topic changes from, from sports into backbiting, into slandering, into making fun of people. Well, eh? So, as long as what you want to say is beneficial, say it. If it's not beneficial, then don't say it. That's why the scholars said that what you say is of three cases. It is either good or bad or none of the two. None of the two. Now, if it's bad, then of course, nobody is going to say, I'm going to say it. Okay? And if it's good, nobody will say, don't say it. Because it's good. It benefits you. Okay? But if it's none of the two, it's better not to say it. Why? Because saying it might lead you into saying things after it that will harm you might make you fall into things that will harm you. That's why and never we said that the other side of him, if you open the other side of him, did you go back to the chapter I told you about? Did you read what Imam Nawawi said there in that chapter? Huh? Who did? Who, 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 who gave a read, a quick read on what Imam Nawawi said on that chapter? He said, لِأَنَّ الْكَلَامِ الْمُبَاحِ قد ينجربك إلى ما هو مكروه الحرام. He says because the lawful speech, يعني the words which are permissible to say, okay, might drag you into something that is disliked or or impermissible. Impermissible. هذا بارك الله فيكم. And then he said. وَهَذَا كَثِيرٌ فِي الْعَادَةِ says this usually happens a lot. What happens a lot? That people start off their 
conversation with things that are that are impermissible, but it ends up with what? With things that, that, that are evil. Okay? And you might say to yourself, but my intention is good. We have a general principle in Sharia that says that bad action does not justify the good intention. Because in Islam, we have two ahadith that judge every action. What are those two ahadith? The first hadith is إِنَّمَا الْعَمَانُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Every action is according to its intention. And the second hadith, the hadith of Aisha, whoever did something, whoever innovated an act that is not according to our religion is rejected. So here, you have to look at every action from two aspects. From the aspect of the intention and from the aspect of the validity of the action as well is the action going accordingly with the sunnah, with the teachings of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or is it not? So if it's not, it might be haram, might be makroh, might be bid'ah, correct? So are we going to say because of that, that the good intention rectifies it? No. Why then? Otherwise, stealing for the poor would be good, just because the intention was good. And killing to end the oppression would be nice. Sahih? Because with the killing, the oppression is ended. But it's not that case, man. With the killing, the oppression will increase. See, the people don't look at it. The, the person who follows his anger, his emotions, he doesn't look at what happens later. He looks at what happens now. Okay? So what is the result? The consequences of this act are, are dangerous. They're not pleasing. What the barakah Allah fikum? What the hibbuli lisan in preserving the tongue? An sarih fashion. Sarih open, open, direct, blunt. Salih direct. Action. Obscenity. Obscenity. Yeah, the words that no one would like to say. Like the F word, the S word, the name of the private party, the name of sexual intercourse, all of that. The words that people would do. That, that, that the sensible people, okay, and then you rephrase, the sensible people would not, would not want to say that. Would not find suitable and, and befitting for them to say, to say that word. People who have shame. People who have haya, they're not going to say such words. This is fuhsh. Fuhsh is whatever you find awful. To do or say. That's why a zina is called what? Fa'isha. Because it is found awful. It is found awful by who? <coughs> by the believer, I said. By the, by the believer. So, you have to preserve your tongue from open obscenity. Open obscenity and indecency. And in general, every ugly, a is ugly, 
Kennedy is words. Word. Words. Words. Kennedy words. So you have to preserve your tongue from hope and obscenity and in general from every rigid and ugly word. Okay? Then he gave you many examples here. Okay? If you, if you didn't understand anything, please ask. Then he said, وَأَيْمُنِ الطَّلَاقِ وَانْتِهَانِ أَيْمُنِ الطَّلَاقِ أَيْمُنِ is the plural of yameen. What does yameen mean? Huh? Right side. Linguistically. Okay? When, I'm, when, when you make an agreement with someone, okay? Which hand do you use? Right. You use the right hand. Agreed? Yes. Agreed. Yes. That's why they gave the oath, the name of the right hand. Mm -hmm. So they say, Yameen is the oath. Mm -hmm. So if you swear to do something, we call it a Yameen. Because before, they used to do it, they used to shake hands when they do it. When they establish an agreement that is not to be broken, they use the right hand. That's why it was called Yameen. It is called Yameen. So the Yameen is the promise, the covenant. It's called Yameen. Now, a Yameen is not something which is in itself bad, correct? Because we find the Prophet وسلم, using it. He says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ By the one in whose hand is my soul. Allah SWT, the Prophet وسلم, uses the Yameen. Swears. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal qamar kalla wal qamar wal layli idha wal asr wal fajr wadih tallahi laqad alimtum ma jinna li nusida bil ard tallahi by Allah you know that we have not come to cause mischief in the land and, and indeed we were not we were not Huh? We did not steal. So the Yameen in itself is not bad. But when it becomes too much and for no good reason, it becomes bad. It becomes makru. And Especially Yamin al-Talaq. Yamin al-Talaq. Why did he refer the Yamin to al-Talaq? That means the Yamin which you met, which you link to al-Talaq. How? That you say, for example, to your wife, if you go to that house, well, If you go to that house, you're divorced. Or, they say it in another way, the Arabs they say, Alayya al-Talaq. Alayya al-Talaq, what does that mean? That means, upon me is a talaq if you don't come with me now. Or if you don't do what I want you to do. 
So this is a way. <clears throat> Why does a person say that? It is a way to push you to do whatever he wants you to do. <clears throat> well then, this is something which you should preserve your time for. This is something which you should preserve your time from. You should never use wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. Any sort of yameen, you only use it when it is necessary. When is it necessary? If you want to, yani, emphasize. emphasize something that is needed because the person, for example, does not believe you or might have a, a suspicion regarding what you say. So here it is okay. And it's better not to do it. Well then, it's better because you should not take the yameen of Allah as a play. You should take it as a sacred thing. Something sacred. The Amin of Allah is something sacred. Something not to be taken lightly. So if it, what you swear on is something important, of a great importance that you have to, or that you need to emphasize, and say yes indeed it is like that, then it is okay. Otherwise, the Amin should be avoided, especially the Amin that is linked to Al-Balaq. Then there comes the rulings, the rulings, does the talaq, does the talaq happen or not? We don't want to get into that. But, we say in general, avoid mentioning the talaq and you remain. Huh? Talaq is just divorce? Talaq is just divorce. You mean like, just to separate from more? Yeah, talaq, talaq. Divorce. Talaq is the word, once you say, there is a mutawa. Whether you like it or not. There's a what? The word talaq, if you say it, even if you're joking, it takes effect. A talaq is one of the issues that are considered an exception from hadith innam al amal bin niyat. How many of you knew that? You were joking with your wife. You said, Anti Balak? He a Balak. Even if you were joking. Okay. The only case where the scholars look at the intention is in the words which are unclear. Is in the words which are unclear. Like take your bags and go home to your, to go to your family's house. Okay? Here, it is asked of the intention. What did you mean? And that's a suspicious word that you said there. Because this usually, especially in some cultures, considered to be a divorce. A word said for divorce. Go to your family's house means you are divorced. So also, the tradition uh, counts in some rulings, some Islamic rulings. Some Islamic rulings are judged by an urf, an urf is tradition. And an urf is a proven source by which the rulings are understood in Sharia. And al maruf is what implies it in the Qur'an. عَاشِرُهُنَّ <laughs> بِهِ Thank you.
So you see, the more we go along, the more you know that that your safety is in not speaking, except in what is necessary. Now. Yes, this is specific to divorce, but he mentioned it as a as an example. Okay. But this falls under كل كلمة قبيح والحفظ للسان. It falls under that barakah. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said. Not Allah's name an excuse in your oaths against your doing good and acting piously and make peace among mankind. And Allah is all here, all known. Between brackets, do not swear much. And if you have sworn against doing something good, then give an expiation for the oath and do good. Surah number 2, verse number 224. Swearing much should be avoided. Don't swear much. Okay? See, the scholars, my dear brother, they mention that, you know, sometimes it is wise to mention the very violation that happens the most as an indication to the rest which happens rarely, okay? So in an environment, Yamin al in the Arab world, happens so much, subhanAllah. Tala is like a game here. That's why you see, mashallah, the, if you go to the court, what do you see? See the files of Tala filling the desks. Okay? This is not just here, this is everywhere. Everywhere. The West, the East, everywhere. Okay? For, for many reasons. Many reasons. Okay? But one of the many reasons here is Yamin al Because of people's ignorance. Okay? He says, no, but I don't mean talaq. I said, no, it doesn't matter what you mean. I was just joking, that Allah is not a joke. Allah is not a joke. So once the word Allah comes out of your mouth, Allah makes it valid. And it is counted. And it deducts the number of Allah that you have. Now you have two. Mm -hmm. You have two now. Do it a second time, you have one. And, and ignorance is an excuse. It's not an excuse, definitely. Do it two times, let's say she gets out of her idda, then you get married to her again with a new contract. How many talafs do you have? One. one. Not three. It doesn't get renewed. It's not a car that you go to the renew. <laughs> is not to totally a bad thing as a lot of people. It's not a bad thing at all. It is a solution when there are no solutions. It is the final solution, not the beginning, not the first solution. If you go there and the talaq, it's not the first solution, it's the last solution. And it is the best solution when there, are, when, the, when there is no other solution. 
Sometimes uh, both, both parties are good. And sometimes the last and final and only solution will be Tara. And people are two extremes in this, in this case. The first extreme I told you about, the second extreme, when they don't believe in something called Allah. No, 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 Barat. No matter what. They are caves, they are... See, the kids, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يحفظهم. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them. But sometimes, even if they are kids, sometimes Allah is the best. Not because it is the uh, one of the first options. No, because that is the only solution in this case. Well, that will come up No. I just had a question. Um, Khola, Khola. Yeah. Is, is this the, on the same line that the sister asked for Khola? Because no, Khola is something different. Khola. See, a talaq is in the hands of who? The man. So nobody can do talaq except the man. If the talaq was in the hands of the woman, no woman would stay with the man. <laughs> Why? Because the women, unlike the men, the emotions are more, uh, they are more emotional than they are logical. Yani, not saying that they're not logical, but they're, they're saying when they get emotional, the emotion takes over sometimes. Okay? So it was so from the hikmah of Allah that it was in the hands of the man, not the woman. It's the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows us definitely more than we know our own selves. Okay, so uh, in the case, in some cases, where the man could not give a talaq, the qadi, the judge, would separate. In some cases, it is lawful and ordained that the qadi, the judge, separates the man from the, the woman from the man. This is not called a talaq. This is not a talaq, this is a khula. And khula is when you tear something from something else. SubhanAllah. Look how good thing. With what name it was given. Wadah barakallahu feekum. Taymun al-talaq is clear. It's clear that mun al-talaq, when a person says Ali al-talaq, he of course, uh, many people use this as a threat, as a threat. So, yani, there's a difference of opinion. If you meant to threaten and you did not mean a para, what's the ruling? Is it taken as an oath that you need to expiate or is it counted as a para? Okay, here is a matter of uh, uh, difference between the scholars. Okay? And it is enough, the true believing slave, when he knows that some scholars have said it's counted as a talaq, the wise will stay away from this completely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, In Surah Al-Isra, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَلِمًا Intihari. Intihari is telling off someone or shouting at him. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْرِمْ Say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at them, but address them in terms of honor. So, intihari muslimin, shouting at a muslim or telling him off. Surah Al-Isra, Surah number 17, verse number... Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yeah, of the things which are considered the ugly words, rigid words that a, a, a Muslim should not do, is raising his voice against another Muslim. سبحانه وتعالى سيد وأما السائل فلا تنهر تنهر from انتهاء فأما اليتيم فلا تنهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث ها which سورة is this Not the beggar, Al Ihani Bi'al. Ihani is insulting him. Ihani, Al Ihani, or insulting him. Ihani originally is Ihanati. It's Ihana. Ihana is insulting, disgracing, disgracing. Ihani is disgrace, and Ihana is disgrace. Don't degrade the Muslim and disgrace him. Or Ihani bi'ali. Don't disgrace him with a shamefulness. And Aar is a shamefulness. Or a defect. You don't criticize him and disgrace him because of a certain shamefulness or with a shamefulness or or a disgrace, a disgraceful thing. Shamefulness. Al Aar is shamefulness, and from from it, Al Aura is taken. Something that is shameful to show is called Al Aura.
But Seb, Seb is, is cursing. No, they mean, they probably mean criticizing the person who is Islam and saying that he has chosen a bad religion, maybe that what it means, Allah, but Allah, I didn't hear that. I don't recall that part. So, Asab is cursing. Cursing is saying bad words to someone. Minsab be out of cursing or tahwifi. Tahweef is frightening. Frightening, scaring, threatening. It is not permissible to scare your brother Muslim, even if you're joking. These foundations, 
are lost with some people. Especially some people, sadly, who are practicing. When they see another person practicing like them, subhanAllah, I do not know, I don't understand. There's a person, yani, even the kuffar, you know, when they see someone in their same position, it, it draws them to him. Or someone wearing the same clothes, you know. If you, yani, if, if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if uh, for example, if, uh, you know, they say, I mean, we have a great principle, we have, they say, المشاكلة في الظاهر Yani, the out, outer resemblance leads to the inner resemblance. What does that mean? That means if someone looks like you on the, on the outside, this will automatically make you love him. It will draw you to him. Yani, I'll give you an example. If you go on the streets, for example, and you see someone uh, from among people who are not wearing the thobe, if you see someone wearing the thobe, like you, like you are, would you be happy with that? Don't you find the happiness in your heart? And you would want, there's something in your heart telling, telling you that you want to go and, you know, introduce yourself to this person? With the beard. Or, or, or someone who has uh, yani, uh, similar features that, 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 you are, that you have? Yes, this is, this is why in Islam we are not allowed to uh, imitate the kuffar. Because the outer resemblance leads to the inner resemblance. If you dress like a kafir, act like a kafir, talk like a kafir, walk like a kafir, well, if you see a nah. if you see uh, if you see a kafir, if you see a kafir, then they will be you will be drawn to him automatically. Okay. And if you if you're on uh, in the streets wearing the cap backwards and uh, and uh, listening to some music and uh, dancing in the streets and you see someone doing the same, you will automatically be drawn to him. This is someone that no no something that no, this is a fact that no one can can argue. Hmm? Huh? Psychology. College? Psychology. 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 Well, what led us to speak about this? Takhweef. What made us. Uh, huh? Ah, yes. So, for the Muslim, haq. the Muslim, the haq of the Muslim upon you is that you love him. Except if there is a justified reason to hate him. And even if you hate him, you don't hate him from every aspect, the Muslim. You hate him for what wrong he does, but you still have that love for him because he is a Muslim. Uh, uh, the resemblance leads to the inner? Naam. Al-Mushabaha. Al-Mushabaha. Yeah. You can see Al-Mushakana also, same thing. Al-Mushakana, Al-Mushabaha is the same thing. Al-Mushabaha, the Dwarah, the Jurru, is Al-Mushabaha, the Dwarah. Why? Why all of these mentioned are preserved from? He said, "Limanai jamiha fi ghairi haqin shami." Li is to reason. Li means because. Because of what? Mana. What is mana? Mana is the same thing as mamnuwa. Mana means memnuah. What's memnuah? Prohibited. Because of them, all of those being prohibited. All of these prohibited. 
جميعها all because of the prohibition of all of these but he gave an exception he says in other than a given right in other than an Islamic right yani all of these are prohibited except if there is an Islamic right an Islamic justification that allows you to do it The last, the last one. <laughs> all of all of them. Fi in. Ghairi other. Haq right. Shari Islamic. So al the preserving of the tongue from open uh, obscenity and every rigid word. And the yameen of al and uh, shouting at the Muslim or disgracing him with the shamefulness. From cursing or frightening him because of the pro prohibition of all of those in other than a given right, in other than an Islamically given right. That's it for today. Any questions? Intihar is telling of Shah. Muslim telling of Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that there are three talaq which we have to separate, is there any other entity that can change that? Any government, any rule? That no, it's not three or something else, it's six or it's five. Does anyone else have the right to change that? It's already, already become clear. No, no one has a right to change it. Except in certain cases. Certain cases, but they're not changing. In certain cases, because. Very specific. Yes, very specific. Very specific. The first sentence, translate that word from us. Word to word, the first one. Huh?